guys how you doing out there i hope you're all well it's a bit of a fickle but bright day today so the light is going to be a little bit funny but it's sunshiny so i'm happy um and welcome to the second book club video um, of the series i'll link up above the first one and i'll link up the introduction book video as well just so you know if this is the first time you're looking at this and you're wondering what this is all about up there will be all the information oh and uh rules we do have rules in this club please make sure you follow them um <laughs> so i'm gonna go straight into it and today we're gonna be doing not one but two books i know i am spoiling you we are looking at today 59 authentic turn of the century fashion patterns by christina harris and the voice of fashion uh by francis gimbal i'll say by they're both compiled by the same by those two authors so we're going to be looking at both of those. I could have done a video on each of them, but to be honest, they are fairly similar. They've got different patterns, but they are fairly similar in layout, instruction, um, and I just felt like I'll probably be repeating myself, um, and that would make for quite a boring video. Um, so I'm going to do not one, but two. Ha ha! this book first um this is the dressmakers patterns for more than 50 different garments included in this volume first appeared in 1890s um, in issues of quarterly the voice of fashion most of the patterns were drawn for stylish day wear for women but there are house dresses and nightwear as well along with a selection of suits and dresses for young boys girls and several garments for men so just do this on its own pretty good it covers pretty much everything you'd want if you're getting into authentic pattern cutting and dress construction um i know a lot of people say you know what's historically accurate but i think authentic is a good word here um and yeah and as it says oh, pattern paper um it's yeah let's have a look so we have drawings of what the finished garment will look like and we have patterns on there so i'm just actually looking to make sure i'm picking everything in the right place um and yeah it's all scaled down but they all have i'm going to try and get a close-up picture of what it actually looks like um so you can see what i'm talking about so you have a, like a grid system and you have numbers down the side numbers going across numbers going everywhere um and that's quite important and a very interesting um, method of pattern drafting um and it's called the apportioning um, system is is very very good very clever um, I'm not going to go too much into the ins and outs the apportioning method uh, I'm going to be covering a little bit of that in my next foundations for field video so in this book we have just have a load of different types of art you know um, dresses we've got a ladies sack nightgown sack to a gentleman's dressing gown to be honest you could probably you certainly don't have to make it just for gentlemen you could make it for yourself if you fancy doing that um, anything goes and uh, we've got just like different types of ladies costumes i mean some of the stuff i really like i'm actually just i've just noticed this one um i might try and do something around that i quite like that one i like the slightly <laughs> unlike the ridiculous sleeves which just don't don't cut it for me um i much prefer the slightly more simple elegant style of those types of um dresses so we've also got house dresses now most of these patterns in here will be quite smart and um, they'll be for going out you know making house calls or you know traveling up to town on a train things like ladies house dresses like this one you can see I've, I've put some writing up on here you can do something around that I'm um, the t purple top I had in my foundations revealed video um, that purple top was a combination of this top and that one they're very very similar in style but I combined the two to make a nice shirt which I can wear with a skirt I can wear with jeans or trousers there's actually quite a lot of children's stuff in here I really so again if you're looking to make stuff for kids you know um, Halloween costumes or something like that this might get a little let's say got a, a boy suit you know make that rough that up a bit you've got yourself a um you've got yourself a nice little halloween costume there yes yeah, several different types of street costume or mrs costumes stout ladies costume <laughs> 
so that's thrifty and authentic turn of the century fashion patterns now for one thing this book does not contain and i am surprised it doesn't i think it's in the second volume are the rulers for the apportioning method but you cannot make draw these patterns up to your size without it the voice of fashion is basically a comp it contains a comprehensive selection of women's styles um, from rare originals of 40 magazines published from 1900 to 1906 so, but what this does contain is the rulers oh, sorry for the apportioning scale now because i'm not going to go into too much detail because this is actually about the books but i will be going into a bit more detail in one of my uh, my next foundations revealed um video now thankfully you know like i said if you have a look it's very very similar you've got all different markings out what this doesn't have obviously is men's out uh, men's outfits maybe a couple of children's i but i don't think so and it kind of goes on it gives you sort of um the what this sort of you know image here so you can get an understanding of what it looks like um, or what it would look like on um i think some of these are drawn some of them look like they might be half photos i'm just trying to find one 12 seconds later so it looks like you've got a woman's face a proper woman's face put in superimposed onto a drawing very weird i mean this one is a bit of one chemise pattern um and yeah it just goes like ladies oh we've got ladies summer dress um you've got a nice ladies jacket which i quite like traveling suits a shirt waist it you could like i said you could um certainly make a complete out um complete wardrobe just with this book alone it's even got a bride's costume so look not necessarily to my taste but you know finishing the garment talks about pressing it talks about seams it talks about boning hooks and eyes you know making skirts all wool and goods should be sponged before making up to remove any shiny appearance and shrink the goods as well actually well, that's not bad advice at all and so that's kind of a very brief overview of both books um do i like them yes i do are they easy to follow no they are not um these are not for beginners i really wouldn't recommend it if you've got if you're looking into it and you're just starting off on your sewing journey completely these aren't going to be your friend there is very very little instruction about how to actually make up each individual garment you've got a little bit at the start of each book but that is it it's expecting you to know what to do because these were templates for dress professional dressmakers and clothiers so they knew what to do they didn't need to be told you need to put it here and you need to do that and you do this with the seam and or with that and the pleats they knew what to do they would look at it they'd scale it up accordingly and they would run with it so if you are somebody who likes to have clear instructions or you're new to sewing or historical sewing i really can't recommend this um i have another book which i'll go through in another video about that's probably a little easier for beginners i certainly that was my first book and i certainly enjoyed it and it was very helpful um but that being said you know don't be don't be completely put off if you think actually that's what i want to you know the whole level up leveling up your skills have this ready to go have a look at it you know maybe you try a little mock-up here and there um but don't expect it to tell you how to do something if something goes wrong you're gonna have to try and work that out for yourself or go online and find somebody who might be able to help you because these books won't obviously as i said this book doesn't have the apportioning rulers that you need and you need them um you, again you can't do it without them um so you probably do need the pair i guess and i got these as presents so I, I don't really know the costs of what these are whether i think they are worth it I would say they are because it's always nice to have these books if you like sewing um i would pff, annoyingly i would say this is probably a more rounded book than the voice of fashion because this has some children's stuff this has some men's stuff as well um but it doesn't have the rulers whereas this has all female costumes and it has the rulers but that's all it gives you and also 
I have no idea why, but the Victorians love to use fabric. <laughs> this, you need a lot of fabric to make an awful lot of these things. Um, I've made, <laughs> I drew out a pair of bloomers from drawers, I think from this book. I'm not going to do too many details because that's in the video coming up, but oh wow, it was, um, I didn't use it in the end. Spoiler alert, they are not readily available in bookshops. I think both of these had to be ordered in. Now, maybe if in different countries it's a little easier to get these books, but in the UK, they're not that... Sorry, they're not that um, readily available. Uh, so I had to order these in. But I was going to give them an arbitrary number out of 10. Seven thimbles? you're new or you've, your confidence is a little low and you need to be needed boosting I, I can't really recommend them but if you are interested do I mean say do give them a go I'm just giving you my personal opinion on this one I think that is it for today um thank you very much guys I hope you enjoyed this please like share and subscribe um it helps me out a lot as I'm enjoying doing this and I'd like to you know widen my audience if I can um I will have I've got plenty more books so plenty more to come in this series I've got another couple of videos in the pipeline and I've got loads of other ideas um, also if you follow me on Instagram at the same um, needle and fur you'll see that I'm constantly posting the fabric that I'm buying <laughs> um, and some of the ideas that I have so you can sort of see what I'm doing on there as well but thank you very much guys you... this has been a crazy cat lady productions you've been watching an original idea take care guys goodbye been watching a cat crazy cat lady productions no in 1890s in uh the issue uh, we will be oh, what am i doing what am i saying